Today we're going to talk about uh, long-term storage of lithium polymer batteries. Um, we're at the end of our flying season at the time of this filming. We've got maybe a month of good flying weather left off and on. So a lot of these packs are going to be sitting on the shelf for four or five, maybe even six months coming up here very shortly. So we want to make sure that we put them in a state where the, chemically they're stable and they're going to be in the best shape as possible when we pull them out in the spring. So I, to understand why storage charging is so critical, uh, you need to understand, I guess, the fundamentals of lithium polymer batteries. Uh, they have a safe voltage range. On the low end, it's 2.7 volts per cell. Industry standard would be 3 volts because it, even at 3 volts, if you have any kind of load at all, it's going to dip below 3.0 volts. It may even go below 2.7. So the industry kind of runs at a 3 volt low uh, standard. And on the high end, it's 4.2 volts. Most chargers will charge to 4.2. Um, depending on the manufacturer of the battery that you have, it may even allow up to 4.22 volts. In fact, the uh, TP610C has this competition car mode for our, for our surface guys that, uh, that want to get the absolute maximum charge in their packs because they're in timed heats. And uh, you can take it all up to 4.22 volts and Thunder Power is fine with that. But you always want to check with your battery manufacturer. But if we establish a baseline of 2.7 volts to absolute low and 4.2 volts on the absolute high, um, it's important to understand that, that that voltage has an impact on the battery chemistry. And if we look at a lithium polymer battery, it's a, it's a bag of inert ingredients. It's, it has a, um, you know, carbon plates or, or the actual cell plates themselves separated by insulators. So if we take one single foil pack, which is, which is one cell, and we look at how it's constructed, it has you know, cell plate, insulator, cell plate, insulator. And many of those, if you've ever pulled one apart or had one crash or something, you see a bunch of thin plates, and that's what those are, is each of the actual cell plates. All that's based in a, in a polymer. So there, there's a lithium polymer aspect. Now the polymer serves a few functions. Um, not only is it a conductive polymer, uh, it also acts as an insulator or as a, um, as a stabilizer. So when we look at the discharge across a lithium plate uh, on a battery, uh, by bathing it in a polymer, the polymer regulates the discharge. So it, it can, creates a condition and environment for the actual cell plating. Um, on the high end, if we go at uh, 4.2 volts or we overcharge, we can very quickly destabilize the polymer. Um, even storing batteries at a full charge will begin to destabilize the polymer. And some of us have witnessed that. You may have if you've flown a lot of different batteries or used a lot of different batteries. And that's, uh, that shows up in puffing. If you see a cell that starts puffing out and it, it feels like it's filled with air, um, it's actually outgassing of the polymer. But you'll get a big, a big puff on the top and bottom of the pack and you can kind of squish it down with your fingers. That's outgassing. So when that occurs, what you've done is destabilize the polymer. Or, the, or maybe you didn't do it intentionally, it was a defect with the battery or it was just happened over time, um, but you've destabilized the polymer to where it's losing its effectiveness to stabilize the, uh, the lithium, pl lithium plates, the actual cell plates themselves, and uh, it's also lost some of its properties that allow the, the consistent discharge rates we want with our lithium polymer batteries, and of course the actual uh, internal resistance and the, and the cell stability itself. So gassed or puffed out packs are a bad thing. We want to discard those as soon as it occurs. On the low voltage side, um, we actually start doing damage to the plating itself. It starts building up internal resistance and uh, its ability to discharge and deliver the performance and capacity that it's stated uh, is compromised as well. So low voltage is bad, high voltage is bad. But if we actually completely discharge a pack, uh, it's important to realize it's just a bag of inert ingredients. That's why you can cut off the leads or insulate them, trim them and insulate them with some uh, shrink tubing. Uh, if they've been discharged below three volts per cell and you can toss them in the trash. Now you always want to check with your local uh, regulations. Uh, you may have to use a battery disposal center for any type of battery whatsoever. But um, as far as is the polymer itself and the ingredients, you've got you know uh, metal and, and non-conductive plastic ingredients inside the cell itself, and a polymer that's just it's not an electrolytic acid. Uh, it's not going to interact or be caustic uh, to anything that it touches. So it truly is an inert battery when it's completely discharged. But uh, when we look at storing them now, uh, there's a couple things to, to realize too. A fully charged lithium pack, we've already established that at fully charged state, uh, over time it can, it can compromise the, uh, the um, uh, stabilization of the polymer itself and start doing damage. But in addition, it has a self-discharge. So if you charge up any battery and let it set on the shelf, it's going to discharge over time. At full, di at full charge, a lithium polymer pack, and this is average, uh, depends on the manufacturer, depends on the, the, uh, the components used and the, and the chemistry, but uh, it's going to discharge up to about 2% per month. So um, on the low end now, uh, if we look at a 50% charge and taking it up to about between 3.8 and 3.9 volts per cell is about 50% charge. So say 3.85, if we have a cell at 3.85 volts, 
it loses less than 1% per month. So now we've got not only a chemically stable uh, voltage uh, inside the battery, we've also got a very low self-discharge rate. So we can store our packs at 3.85 volts per cell, come back in six months and they're gonna be ready to go with no damage and no uh, reduced uh, possibility of puffing or swelling. And, uh, and they're gonna be in good condition for the next season. Uh, when we look at uh, how to discharge or ch apply a storage charge, if we've established 3.8 to 3.9 volts per cell is 50% charge, that's what they ship from for the, for the manufacturer. So when you get a brand new cell, um, it's already going to be in its most chemically stable state. It's going to be at 50% charge, and if you check the individual cell leads, it's going to be between 3.8 and 3.9 volts. Since it lasts so long at that voltage with such little self-discharge, uh, you're going to have uh, all the cells very closely uh, matched to the same voltage when you get it because you don't know how long it's been at the manufacturer. You don't know how long it's been sitting in distribution. If you bought it through a local hobby shop, it could be sitting on their shelves for a number of months. So the manufacturer wants to make sure that your battery is in the best possible condition when you receive it, so they apply that 50% charge. Um, depending on the charger you have, now of course the easiest way to do it is to use the battery. Uh, typical ESC is going to cut off the batteries at uh, about 3.2, maybe 3.4 volts per cell. 3.2 is by far the average. So your ESC is going to go into cut off at about 3.2 volts per cell and then all you need to do is drive it up on a, on a storage charge up to 3.8, 3.85 uh, volts and now you've got the battery uh, all set for storage. Depending on the charger that you have, uh, it may or may not be able to discharge down to storage. It may only be able to charge up to storage if it offers a storage setting. If it doesn't but it offers a discharge option, then all you do is set up a lithium polymer discharge and uh, set the cutoff voltage for 3.85 volts per cell and your charger will take it down to that storage voltage. Again, depending on the, the charger that you own, the 610C from Thunder Power does not have the capability to discharge the storage, it can only charge up the storage, so you have to use its standard discharge feature in order to drive a full pack down or a, a pack that's higher than 3.85 down to the appropriate voltage. Um, one thing to keep in mind is almost any charger on the market has a very low discharge capability, meaning the rate at which it discharges is very low, typically about a half an amp. Um, is about what it's going to handle and it can, it can really depend on the manufacturer but uh, even though you can charge at a rapid rate it discharges very slowly. All you do is put your battery inside of a charging or storage bag like the ones I have on the, on the table here. Uh, Thunder Power makes a number of them from a square up for like 6S batteries fit in here nicely even to uh, you know the flat bags from a medium to a large. Uh, discharge or charge your batteries inside of a storage bag but uh, set it Set it up for the discharge and just make sure you don't leave it unattended. You want to have it in your shop while you're doing it or someplace where you can keep an eye on it. And uh, just let it do its thing. It may take an hour, hour and a half uh, to discharge the battery if it's, if it's fully charged and it's a fairly high capacity battery. It's going to take a while for it to get down to those voltages since it discharges at such a slow rate. That's why I say it's a lot easier just to run it in the vehicle um, down to you know, half or to cut off even to, to uh, ESC voltage, a low voltage cutoff and then just charge it up to where it needs to be. But it's a really simple process, and again, most chargers, they don't have a storage function. They will offer a discharge function. Same thing, it's just you're going to have to tell it to take it to 3.85 volts per cell on the discharge, and you'll be set. Now, this is all assuming that you're using a balancing charger, too. You don't want to discharge a pack off the main leads and drive it down to its calculated voltage. Um, if you look at 3.85 and you've got a 4S pack, it's 3.85 times 4, a 2S times 2, a 3S times 3, and so on. Um, you can get the calculated storage voltage off the main leads, but you want each of these cells to be as closely matched as possible when you do your storage charge. Um, so when you pull it out in the spring, none of them will just charge further than, than their minimum voltages or, or way out of sync or way out of balance. And that really goes to the last thing of balancing. Um, always use your balance, uh, use a balancing charger, uh, do balance discharging. And uh, really it's just kind of a recap. We're at the point now where all the chargers in the market, all the popular chargers are balancing multi-chemistry chargers. Uh, some do offer our balancing multi-chemistry chargers, but they offer a mode that's not a balanced uh, charge. So make sure that you're taking advantage of the balancing ports when you're charging or discharging so you've got your cells matched as closely as possible. So um, other than that, just be safe and mindful of, of the fact that, that this is just a, a, a storage vessel, an energy storage vessel. At absolute discharge or extremely low, below minimum safe voltages, it's, it's not a dangerous uh, um, uh, battery and a very safe battery chemistry. And again, very safe to use throughout uh, normal applications. Your chargers are going to stop your, you from overcharging your batteries, and your ESCs are going to cut you off if you have them enabled, and some helicopters people don't enable them but you're going to see a, a performance degradation. Just don't drive it down below uh, minimum voltages, but typically in all your, your ARFs and, and your, um, uh, your off-road vehicles, 
And uh, in service vehicles, they're going to have a, a, a cutoff set up in the ESC if they're designed for lithium polymer batteries to keep you from under or over discharging your batteries. Everything in between is kind of up to you. And the biggest damage you can do, the most damage you can do is leaving a battery stored at full charge for an extended period of time. And extended period, of course, is, it could even be as, as short as a week. But keep in mind that within 24, 48 hours, you begin to do uh, some degradation to the polymer when you've got a lipo completely charged and just sitting there. It's meant to be a storage vessel that's meant to discharge very quickly. It's not meant to store uh, energy for an extended period of time at maximum values. Lithium ion's a little different. Pressurized wet cell, it can handle uh, a full charge for extended periods of time because it has a much lower discharge rate. Our lithium polymers are specifically designed for us to get incredible high discharge rates out of them. And as such, there's some things we have to keep in mind when we do store uh, maximum current inside the battery, ma maximum voltage in the battery. It's just not designed to do that. So. Simple process to do, discharge your batteries if you're going to leave them on the shelf. If you come back from the field and spend a day or two or the track and spend a couple of days, just discharge them down to uh, storage voltage and then you don't have to worry about it all. There's significant investment and you want to keep them in as best possible shape as you can and, and that applying that storage value is the best way to do it. Um, if you have any more questions, you can go to our website at 2bfly.com. Look under our knowledge base section, you'll see a lot about batteries and about chargers. Um, if you're still confused or you have some, some concerns or questions, you can always hit us up at our support line at support at 2bfly.com. I'm Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby. Thanks for watching.